morning folks, in the words of SJ Poor, it is time, that's right, it is time to put together the control panel. We have the sticker and we have installed most of the stainless steel bump bars, we might call them, but they are basically just drawer handles from eBay, very cheap. There's a little screw down there as well, look, so it's just a piece of stainless steel tube with two end caps screwed on. So we've put four of them on the box itself. These two large ones are to go on the door. I don't yet have the heat sink. I'm hoping it's going to arrive today. We shall see. But regardless, I can just cut a hole very ginger-like into the top of the panel and screw the heat sink on when it arrives. I've already put, as you've just seen there, some lacquer on top of the uh, on top of the black satin spray. The black satin spray, by the way, for those who are interested, is from Tool Station. This is called uh, Pro Coat Tough Industrial Paint, and it's like five quid for half a litre spray tin. Some of the best spray paint I've used actually comes from Tool Station. That uh, Pro Coat is spot on. Anyway, enough of that. I'm going to get the sticker applied to our panel and all these holes are going to be cut out and the next time you see this it's going to have everything on it. Yes. Oh, and one thing I wanted to point out as well. We've got the sticker in a matte finish but obviously the panel's got a satin finish on it. Hold on, it's just behind you. We have a clear coat to go on top so we're not going to be spray painting the over the sticker of course but to protect it we do have this clear quite thick quite durable glossy coating to go on top and hopefully I can get that on without leaving too many bubbles behind we'll see so I'm not going to do this bit on camera because uh, I'm, I'm going to be taking my time with it and it will extend this video far too long and want to keep it short and sweet so today we're going to get all of the instruments in the panel and get everything laid out and then on tomorrow's vlog if I've got time we're going to wire the whole thing up and hopefully see some power going into it maybe even mount it on the brew stand itself I know I said the next time you'd see it would be with the components in but I thought I'd just show you it before we installed them it is actually looking pretty good managed to get it on with very very few air bubbles and what we've done on the edge is I've just wrapped the stick around so far and then with the clear coat I've gone all the way around to the back and I've tucked it in along the back there so let's get this filled up with components now here we go chaps this is it so we've got pretty much everything on there now that looks pretty smart so bump bars, top, bottom, and on the front. So we can just we can kind of use that just to rotate the whole panel around. You can see how convenient it is. Everything's just kind of at hand level. It wants to just tilt back a little bit. But I might just have to tweak the fittings at the back. And it also seems like it's slightly slanted this way. But that might be because the floor is slanted that way as well. The whole stand looks tweaked over a little bit but apart from just a few misalignments on these two light buttons here i managed to get everything else pretty much in place and i think it looks absolutely wonderful i'm very pleased with it so now what we're going to do is work on the bottom so the difference here is uh, with tom's panel he use that bottom section to uh, house his solid state relays and then he cut into the box to mount his uh, power connectors so what I like to do and it's actually the right way round but don't tell him this panel that comes off on the bottom is removable because you can lay all your components on there or all of your cable glands if you're inserting lots of glands through the uh, through the panel itself 
then you can cut it all on a drill press such as that one over there and install everything in one hit and you can still work on your panel and take this away when you know where the holes want to be so that's what we'll do that's all nice and finished now and then we can cut our holes on here and then all we have to do is spray this a little bit and this can sit to one side while it dries while we go ahead and fit all the other components you'll notice as well that we've got three elements these are the three kilowatt all incloy elements from Screwfix. I had to nip over to Workshop to get them. That was the only place that had three in stock. I could have ordered them the next day, but as you'll see, they look very nice and shiny indeed. Unfortunately, this last one must be old stock, so they've given me this old tatty one as well. It did have a different box, but it's got the same name, same manufacturer, and same code. It just looks scabby. I mean I've got an old one over here look and that looks in better condition than that so I don't know I don't know that's a bit longer as well so we'll put it in the HLT that'll be fine for the HLT and these two can go in the boil not a problem and if it burns out well I'll be taking it back to screw fix and getting a replacement but these ones look spot on nice shiny stainless steel elements ready to go in even though they do have brass inserts on the bottom but on the professional elements that you get for the brew kettles my three phase ones have brass inserts as well it's not ideal you can spend the money and get stainless steel ones but you're talking hundreds more on your elements for the professional ones and these I don't think I've ever seen a stainless steel immersion heater element, but maybe you can get brewing elements if you want that are, are you know, fully fully stainless steel bosses on the end. And then we're going to modify these covers that go on the back to take a cable gland, and then out of that cable gland, we're going to run our thermoprobe, which will live in the existing probe here, so we don't need to put another one in the pot. And also we're going to have the wires coming in from the cranes bill float switch so it'll be much easier for us to just hijack these across and have a connector on the side for that 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 can go into and then we can take that disconnect it if you know what I mean and take the whole system out with the cable and take it to where we need to take it to but I think it just makes the whole thing a lot neater. Same here, we'll just have a little little connector to go onto that, onto that cover on the back. So I'm gonna start putting some of these components together. I'm just gonna drill the holes for this base plate so I can get it sprayed up tonight. And then if I've got time, we'll start mounting connectors for all the other bits and bats. Well, I've spent a little bit of time, folks, at the soldering station that I've just set up here. And if I zoom in a touch, I'll be able to show you what I've done. So, I've added some aviation plugs. You've seen them before. I've used them on the control boxes for the cold room. And they're on the big kit as well. Uh, these are three pin. I didn't have any two pin. I think I ordered three pin just in case I wanted to use... The third pin for something else but regardless what I've done is I've taken a uh, the little platinum tip I think it's platinum PT 100 thermoprobe taken the platinum tip out of the whole thermoprobe assembly and I've cut the end off and I've soldered them just onto one of the aviation plugs there on um, connector 3 and 1 and that means on the outside then I can just disconnect the leads to it and then also the other two leads that come off here uh, one of them goes to the cranes bill float switch and the other one goes to the panel so you'll see that it's just linked on the inside there just bridged across and that means I can unhook the cranes bill float switch and unhook the lead to the panel and then the element will come out all on its own 
So what we're going to do, after we've wired this element up and the cable's going to come trailing out the base here, and I'm going to leave the base open because then if any moisture gets in there, it's got somewhere to drain. Sometimes it can be uh, a false economy sealing it all up because if water does, and it invariably will, find its way in, it can't find its way out. So you can see we're going to utilise the probe that's already on the heating element, the, uh, the thermal well should I say, and of course that PT100 is now, I've put some heat shrink on it to protect, protect it from pulling apart, but it's now just going to slide straight down into that uh, thermal well and we'll locate the bits and bats on the front there and then I know it's not stainless and I would have preferred to have a stainless finish on this but as it stands for less than 25 quid there is a removable well not counting the boss that was 40 quid alone 45 quid alone and welding but yeah, the element itself and a couple of three aviation plugs, completely removable and independent heating element for the brew kettle, which we can take out and we can take away to the sink and we can clean it after every brew without worrying about there being crap underneath the elements where we can't reach because we've got a head in a tank. And then of course we can just place some blanking plugs on where this uh, tri-clamp fitting has been removed and then we can do a CIP cycle if I so wish in the boil kettle because of course if we we're rinsing with acid we've just removed the brass component which is the only thing that would react with any any acid like persid of course caustic um, cleaners aren't going to be a problem at all so yeah that's not an issue anyway that's one down I've got one more exactly the same as this to make for the heating element, for the heating element, for the HLT, and then uh, the other boil kettle element is just going to be powered. It's not going to have any of this on it. It doesn't need it. Everything can come off this one. So here's a peak of the element actually on the kettle itself. So you can see it looks like it sticks out a fair bit, and it does to be honest, but not much further than the back of the brew stand. And if we uh, rotate on the tipping mechanism, you'll see that it misses, it misses everything. So that is spot on there. And while I'm here, I just will try to show you the blank plate so if we take that off and obviously we want to take it across see if I can do this one handed so we want to take it across to the uh, to the sink to clean the element then ooh, is it going to get it off? then we'll need to put a blanking plate on there there we go <laughs> years of working with tri pumps that allowed me to get away with that bit of shaky footage but one handed tri-clamp blank installation so there you go that's what it looks like when it's blanked in comparison to what it looks like when it's got the element in so of course now it's blanked we could still go ahead on the inside and fill it up with cleaning fluids and recirculate them around might put a spray ball in the in the lid I might I'm not sure yet here you can see the crane's bill mechanism working. It'll sit between the two elements and uh, when he's up that high there will be liquid look above the element so it will be safe to fire them. It looks like the liquid level is going to be around 20 litres but you can always bend these a little bit so they come on a little bit before and you can kind of calibrate them to be exactly exactly where they need to be on top of the element. So one more thing I want to point out before I go home, this is the panel mounted on its bracket with all of the bits and pieces on and uh, well that's the face of it, that's the, the sticker completed and uh, I thought that was it all done. 
and then we had a delivery today all the way from China it's only the bloody timer reset button isn't it forgot to put it in anywhere so now there's nowhere for it to go I thought do I take the alarm thingy out and have it there but then it says timer alarm thought do I stick it in the middle of the HB and then Gemma came up with the idea why don't you just mount it on the side so when it's beeping you just press the alarm button on the side and it's out the way it's not going to affect how the sticker looks and uh, it'll be nice and convenient just to just to push to detonate hey not just a pretty facey gem mm. <laughs> you ready for home um i'm just going to nip upstairs and do something first do something mm. oh what get abby ready yeah okay <laughs> Well, there we are, folks. You heard it from, uh, I'll not say the horse's mouth. She might be listening. Yeah, so uh, we are going to be going home very shortly. Couple of cock-ups, nothing major, easy remedy, but more progress made today. And, well, I'm getting tired with the whole job. I want it finished. But we are racing along, we have built up a massive brew stand and, and everything. Uh, but I'm looking forward to getting some brews, a maiden voyage on her. Not sure what I'll brew yet, probably something like, um, I actually want to do a different traditional bitter. I think trad bitters are coming back into fashion a little bit. Uh, I was listening to the Hop Forward podcast by Nick Law the other day. If you've not heard it, check it out, it's really good and he was talking to a couple of brewers uh, from the Hackney area in London and uh, they were saying, oh it was from uh, Five Points it was a girl from Five Points, uh, Claudia I think her name was and they were saying that Best Bitters are coming back into fashion and we've noticed that we're selling quite a lot of Harrison's Best so maybe we'll do a nice simple Best Bitter with a few different types of malt in there uh, just to kind of showcase the malts rather than the hops because normally we're just throwing hops at things and there is more to beer than just hops of course anyway folks we're going to come back for a little bit more of this tomorrow a bit more of the brew stand build uh, we're getting closer and closer every day so it's looking promising it'll be up and running before certainly before mid-september get in anyway we'll see you on the next one